for watching Jason Adam TV on Blued and on YouTube. Uh, this is our daily English lesson. If you have any comments during the live stream, uh, please leave them and I'll try to answer during the live stream. Hello, Tay W on Blued. Thank you for watching. Uh, today's English lesson is about tools. So these are some. Uh, today's English lesson. It Jason always forgets to turn off the volume. <laughs> okay. Um, so these are some common tools that you, uh, if you you know you're a builder, uh, or if you're a DIY person at home, uh, you've probably used many of these tools before. Okay. The first is a file file. A file is basically a long flat piece of metal with a handle and it is it has rough a rough edge on the sides. The rough edge is used to file down. We use file as a verb also to file down things that are sticking up like nails or screws. Um, Hello, Black Boy 65. Thank you for watching Jason Adam TV on Blued, and uh, we're also on YouTube. Uh, if you want to see the flashcards or the pictures for this English lesson, I recommend that you tune into our Jason Adam TV YouTube channel. It's the only channel we are broadcasting on. Right. It's, uh, Jason Adam TV is the only channel we're broadcasting on YouTube right now. If you have any questions or comments, uh, let me know, and I'll. Uh, answer them during the live stream. Okay, the next word is vice. Vice. Uh, a vice is basically uh, two blocks that are drawn together by a screw on the side and it's used to hold things in place. So you can um, hold something steady while you cut it or do something else to it. Many times it's used to hold sheets of metal or sheets of wood for cutting. That's called a vise. Uh, vices and clamps do a similar job but they're a bit different. Clamps are usually not as strong as vices and they're not as heavy, so clamps are easier to move around. Okay, the next word is nut. Uh, if you call a person a nut, you mean that they are crazy. So if you use nut as a name for a person, you mean they are crazy. But a nut is actually like a screw that does not have a point on the end and it has like a, a hexagonal shape on the top rather than a slot for a screwdriver so you have to use a wrench to turn the nut and since the nut doesn't have a pointed end you have to drill a hole into the wood or metal for the nut to go through. The nut is fastened on one end with a bolt and a washer. Okay, the washer is used to keep the uh, bolt from slipping. Actually, in this picture, they've got the names backwards, and I just realized that. Uh, this is the first time I've looked at this picture. Um, the nut is actually the piece, the hexagonal yeah. piece with hexagonal. the hole in it, and the bolt is the thing that looks kind of like a screw but does not have a slot in the top. So yeah, they've the they've got the names backwards on this uh, in these pictures. The bolt is the thing that looks like a screw, and the nut is the thing that looks like kind of like a hexagon with a hole in the center. And the washer is used um, 
to keep the nut from slipping over time. So the washer goes on the end of the bolt first and then the nut. And you tighten the nut to hold the bolt in place. Okay, thank you for watching Jason Adam TV. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know during the live stream and I'll try to answer them. Uh, just a note, a washer can also mean a clothes washing machine. Um, we also call a clothes washing machine a washer. Okay, we've got some more pictures. It's kind of confusing though. How come the, the ring is called washer? Why is it called a washer? That That is something I don't know the answer to. Uh, you could probably find it on the internet if you look it up. Um, I'm not sure why it, a washer is called a washer. Okay, the next word is screw. A screw is like a bolt, but usually it's not as thick and it has a tapered end, which means it is pointed on the end. And a screw can be driven into a piece of wood without drilling a hole first. That's why it has a pointed end. Uh, let me talk to the, what, uh, the viewers on Blue and the YouTuber, YouTube. 各位朋友大家好在镜头面前的是Adam老师 Okay, Adam. Okay. Um, I was going to mention both bolts and screws have grooves on uh, around the shaft uh, that help hold them in place. Okay, the next tool is a chainsaw. A uh, chainsaw is a device that has a motor in the back. Uh, that's the green part with the handle. And uh, chainsaws can be electric or gasoline powered. Um, and the motor turns the chain. The chain has cutting blades on it. And as the motor turns, it turns the chain, which chops through trees. Um, so you have to be very careful when using a chainsaw. You, uh, you need to know what you're doing and how to cut a tree safely so that it doesn't fall on you or fall on someone else. Uh, gasoline powered chainsaws are very noisy. Okay, uh, the next is next word is saw or you could also call it a hand saw. Um, this does the same job as a chainsaw but it's very uh, intense uh, it requires a lot of uh, physical work and it's, you have to move the saw back and forth yourself and it takes much longer to cut down a tree this way so that's a hand saw or saw the saw has a blade that has serrated edge that helps it cut through the tough wood. And like the chainsaw, of course, it also has a handle. Okay, a nail is another type of fastener, like a screw or a bolt. Um, but you use it with a hammer. You drive the nail into a piece of wood using a hammer. Goofy uh, say something. Goofy said, I am a non-native speaker. How can I make my accent clearer? Wow, uh, that's a good question. I would say with lots and lots and lots of practice. Uh, 
Now, I know Voice of America, uh, and I think the BBC used to, I'm not sure, but Voice of America and BBC uh, have a slow English news where they speak very slowly so that you can understand. And I would listen to that and try to mimic their accent. But depending on which accent you want to learn, you should probably stick with one in the beginning because um, it could be confusing if you tried to learn both accents at the same time. Uh, I have an American accent and if you're more interested in the American accent uh, you can look for uh, slow English news and I'm pretty sure the VOA Voice of America website still has slow English news but yes lots of practice and if you can watch the person speaking in the video and watch their facial movements it helps also there are videos online that show you uh, how to hold your lips and your tongue when you're making certain sounds like th, th. so when you make the th sound you have to uh, stick out your tongue a little bit between your teeth. You don't hold your mouth open like that. You, when you make the th, th sound, you stick out your tongue a little bit, but you close your teeth around your tongue. Not too hard, or you'll bite your tongue. Oh, so I'm giving you a lot of. Uh, thank you, Blue, for the uh, applause. Okay, uh, Goofy, I hope that answered your question. Um, but practice, practice is the most effective way to learn an accent. Okay, getting back to our um, vocabulary, uh, the next word is hammer. Now, there are two main types of hammer. There's a ball peen hammer, which has a round ball at the back and there's a claw hammer which has a claw in the back that's used for pulling out nails to me uh, the claw hammer is much more useful because if you make a mistake driving a nail you can use the claw hammer to pull out the nail and try again how do you call a flat part? Uh, okay. head the flat part is called the head of the hammer uh, there's also a sledgehammer, which is a very heavy hammer that's used to uh, knock down uh, walls and things like that. It's used for demolition. Okay, but this in the picture is a regular claw hammer. Claw hammer. Okay. Um, the next word is hedge shears, also called hedge trimmers. These are like a very large pair of scissors and you have to hold each handle with one hand and um, they are used to cut the bushes okay, into uh, uh, like a certain shape. Hedge, I think hedge means fence. Uh, shear just means big scissors. Well, in English usually we think of a hedge as a, like a low fence made from bushes. Um, made out of bushes. So that's what hedge shears are for. They are used to uh, trim the limbs on the bushes. So the, send you a heart. Thank you Goofy for the heart and thank you for watching Jason Adam TV. Uh, if you have any friends please share the link so they can um, also see the live stream and anyone who has a question can ask and I'll try to answer. Okay, the next word is ladder. Ladder. Uh, this is a step ladder in the photo. Let me see if I can make it smaller. Yeah, I'm slowly doing it. Okay, I'm making it smaller. Um, so a ladder 
is basically a device that you can use to uh, go up a wall like if you need to hang a picture or uh, you know put in a new window or something or change the light bulb so this is a step ladder it folds it has two sides and it folds up when it's finished uh, a regular ladder only has one side and you lean it against the wall uh, for support so this is actually a step ladder step ladder okay the next word is axe Axe. Uh, besides featuring in scary movies, axes can also be used to chop down trees. Um, it has a long wooden handle and also it has a sharp edge on the blade that Don't is used for chopping. A similar question by, you know, posting a question. Uh, the difference between axe and the cleaver. Okay, uh, an axe has a thicker head, a stronger head, because an axe is used for chopping wood or chopping down trees. Um, a cleaver has a thinner, sharper blade that is used for cutting up uh, parts of animals for cooking. So, uh, and also the handle on a cleaver is much shorter. Uh, a cleaver is usually used as a kitchen tool, whereas uh, an axe is used outdoors or to kill people in the movies. All right, thank you for your questions. If you have any more, please uh, let me know and I'll try to answer during the live stream. Okay. Uh, Actually, uh, this next picture I would call a shovel, but in the picture it's called a spade. Um, so there is a little confusion there. In general, a spade is the same as a shovel, but it's smaller. It's smaller than a shovel. So you might use a spade in your uh, flower garden to plant new flowers or things like that. It's, uh, a spade is usually made for light duty and in the picture they show the spade as having a very pointed end. So let's call a spade and a spade. That is a different spade. <laughs> I think that refers to the suit of cards, uh, spades in the card game. Mm -hmm. Alright, a shovel. No, it's a slang. Call a spade a spade. Yeah, call a spade a spade. What, what does it mean? Uh, you know, call out someone who's doing something wrong, if I'm not mistaken. Being frank, I guess. Yeah, be frank with someone. Yeah. Call a spade a spade. Then there's another uh, slang. Um, Idiom? The they use a nail, uh, which is what? Uh, hit the head on the nail. Right. Oh, you hit it on the nail. Yeah, it means you got it exactly right. So, uh, if you hit the nail on the head, that's the full phrase. Hit the nail on the head. You get something exactly right. Uh, we got a bit more viewers from uh, <clears throat> YouTube. Say hi to them. Hello uh, to our viewers on Blued and to our viewers on YouTube, Jason Adam TV YouTube. Thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, let me know. You know some Chinese that you can greet them. Uh, ni hao. <laughs> I know that. And then? Um, let's see. Xie xie. Oh, xie xie ni. Thank you. Okay, my Chinese is horrible. <laughs> okay, the next word is shovel. A shovel is similar to a spade, but it's bigger. And um, shovels are not only used for digging dirt, they can also be used for uh, removing snow and for other things. In the picture they show a shovel as having a flat head, but I've also seen shovels that have a rounded head. Um, so in my opinion, usually a shovel is much bigger than a spade. All right, the next word is tape measure. Uh, I think it's called that because it's, it looks like a roll of tape 
and is used to measure distance. Tape measure. Hi, thanks for watching. Okay, um, if you have any questions, let me know. The next word is shears. Shears. How do you call the, uh, the ruler that you can draw it up? That's also called a tape measure. Uh, so there's the automatic tape measure that automatically rolls itself up when you let go of it. And then there's also a tape measure that you have to wind up or wrap up by yourself. Those are both called tape measures. Uh, good point. Okay, the next one, I didn't think they were called shears. I thought they were called pruners. P-R-U-N-E-R-S. So I'm not sure about that. I'll have Jason check for me. Pruner is the... Uh, Pruner. Usually, a set of a pair of big scissors are uh, used to trim the, uh, the branches. Branches. Or, yeah. That's what this looks like, actually. Uh, it looks like uh, these... Are pruners and they are used to cut uh, yeah, individual to... branches from bushes. Okay, uh, for example, a worker who uh, who thins out, thins out, sorry, P H I N, thins out and trim, trim trees and the shrubs. Right. So uh, a hedge hedge shears, a pair of hedge shears, can. Uh, cut more at one time but if you want to be more precise you know like cutting someone's hair you can use these uh, shears or what I call pruners to uh, cut individual branches from a bush um, so yeah I would call them pruners actually p-r-u-n-e-r-s okay the next one you probably won't see unless you're watching an old cartoon or your blacksmith uh, it's called an anvil. Anvil. An anvil is a very heavy piece of iron that's used to hammer and shape hot metal on. So a blacksmith would stick a piece of metal in a hot fire until it glowed orange. Then he would put the metal on top of the anvil and hit it with a hammer until he shaped the metal into the shape he needed. It, I think it's the shape of cumulonimbus. Uh, it's kind of shaped like a cumulonimbus cloud, yes. It's Cumulonimbus. Okay, thank you for watching Jason Adam TV. Um, if you have any questions during our English lesson, please let me know and I'll try to answer them. All right, the next word is pickaxe. Pickaxe. So a pickaxe has a long handle like an axe, but the head is pointed on both ends. And it is used for mining or for uh, breaking down rock. Uh, especially for climbers, mountain climbers, they need to make a handhold uh, to climb up the mountain sometimes. And you can use a pickaxe to break the rock. Pickaxe. Okay, the next word is wrench. Uh, a wrench is a tool that's used to turn bolts to tighten or loosen bolts. And we talked about bolts earlier. The bolt is actually this thing here that looks like a screw with a hexagonal head. This is not a, a wrench we use all the time called active wrench or monkey wrench. Monkey wrench, right. Monkey wrench. Okay, so this is just a regular wrench and is used to turn bolts or nuts. Okay, pinchers or pincers. Pincers are used to you know, I've never used pincers before. Oh. 
Um, I guess they can be used for pulling out large pieces of metal that are, are stuck in something. It's a hand tool for holding consisting of a compound levers for grasping. But oh, a grasping, grasping structure on the limb of a crustacean or other oh, Those are the oh, animal oh, pincers. Yeah, like, like pincers. A, 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 a crab or something, right? Yeah, crabs have pincers. Yeah. But I mean, what's the tool used for? Yeah. It used to do to squeeze something, I guess. Okay. To hold something tight. Um, this looks like it, it could be used to pull, you know, to grab onto something like a piece of metal or something and pull it away. Um, and then next are pliers. Pliers are also used to hold on to something uh, like a bolt or a screw especially one that's stripped. If a screw is stripped, the head has worn out so that you can no longer use a screwdriver to remove it. So sometimes we grab onto the, the bolt or the screw with a pair of pliers. You mean strip? How do you spell that? Strip. Uh, S-T-R-I-P. S-P-R-I-P. -P. S-T-R-I-P-P-E-D. Uh, there are two ways a screw could be stripped. The threads of the screw that go around the shaft could be worn out, or the head could be stripped. If the head is stripped, the slot for the screwdriver is worn out, so you can't turn the screw using a screwdriver any longer. Okay, so those are pliers. If you have oh, any questions... No wonder. Um, it flattened out, right? The how do you call it? Tools? The grooves? Okay. Uh, flatten out. One day, uh, when I exchanged my oil for my scooter, the mechanic make it... Or threads. You, uh, threads is more common. He turned... He used he, to fly too hard. And then he, he, he actually made it stripped. He stripped the threads on your oil plug. Okay. That's not good. And yeah, they had to re reconstruct that whole thing. You know. Okay, the next word is level. A level is used to make sure <coughs> that a surface is level or not slanted or not tilted. So um, nowadays most phones have a level application that you can use uh, to make sure that you're hanging your picture iPhone, you know. uh, straight or that uh, the table that you put together is level. Most washing machines have a built-in level that you can look at to see if your washing machine is level. Okay, the next uh, term is monkey wrench. A monkey wrench is a large wrench that is usually used to turn nuts, large nuts, on pipes, on plumbing. Uh, so it's much larger than a regular wrench and usually the handle is painted red. There is uh, a nut that you turn that on the side that uh, makes the monkey wrench open and close or loosen and tighten. So that is a monkey wrench. Okay, the next term is cutter. Uh, usually in America we call them box cutters. And uh, ever since 9-11, uh, you cannot carry a box cutter to school or in a public building. Uh, I know Taiwanese students can, can and do carry these to class all the time, but uh, not in the U.S. You could get in trouble if you take one of these. Uh, to school with you. Um, these are what were used to hijack some of the planes on 9-11 box cutters. Okay, um, garden, the next word is garden fork, but it's more commonly called a pitchfork. 
uh, garden forks or pitchforks, as I know them as, uh, are used to uh, pick up amounts of hay or dried grass and also dried leaves. So you can uh, pick them up with the pitchfork and throw them into a pile. Pitchfork. Back in the old days, uh, if someone was thought to be a witch or something like that in ancient times, uh, the townspeople would grab pitchforks as a weapon and torches and go to the person's house um, to threaten them. There's also a pitchfork in the uh, famous painting. Uh, I think it was by Whistler. It shows an old man and an old woman in front of a farmhouse. And the man is holding a pitchfork. Okay, the next term is rake. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me during the live stream and I'll try to answer them. Okay, so a rake is used to gather dried leaves. And uh, in America, usually we have large yards, depending on where you live. Uh, of course, if you live in a large city, you probably don't. But in Tennessee, most people had huge yards. And in the fall, in America, the leaves will die on um, some of the trees, most of the trees, and fall to the ground. And so you have to rake the leaves up into a pile and you can use a rake to do that. Yeah, I still remember when your mom tried to, you know, pick up uh, all the, the pine... Pine cones? Pine cones. And pine the, needles? The, 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 the leaves, you know, the fallen leaves. The leaves of a pine tree are, are actually called pine needles. Pine needles. It just seem kind of traumatic to grow so many trees in front of your house and uh, you have to pick them all the time. Well, actually, the the trees are good for several reasons. And that is, their root system keep, holds the ground in place, which is especially useful on a ground that is sloped. Uh, it keeps your topsoil from washing away. Uh, another thing that trees are good for is the dead leaves do provide a, a good fertilizer for the ground. And another thing is they block the winds. So... Um, as long as you don't have the trees right next to your house, uh, if there comes a sheer wind, which is a very sudden, fast wind, the trees, if you have a lot of them around your house, they can actually slow down the wind and protect your house from damage, uh, as long as it's not a tornado. Now, tornadoes are a different story. Uh, also, trees provide shade. They can, uh, you know, cool down your yard and even your house in the summertime. So trees are useful. Uh, you have to clean uh, your roof. <laughs> right, you, ha you have to clean your gutters in the fall or you know towards the end of fall because they'll be full of leaves and when it rains the, the gutters will be clogged. Okay, the next word is, wait, let me go over here. Uh, toolbox. Toolbox. So this is just a, usually a metal box, or it could be wooden, that you store some of your tools in. The, the smaller tools, like screwdrivers and hammers and uh, wrenches and things like that. A mallet, uh, sometimes we call it a rubber mallet. Uh, sometimes it's made out of, the head of the mallet is made out of rubber, and sometimes it's made out of plastic. Uh, we use it to hit things that we don't want to scuff or mar. Um, they're also used to close the lids of paint cans so you don't warp the lid so there's a tight seal and the paint doesn't dry out. Um, so yeah, a mallet is used to... Sometimes there are wooden pegs, uh, like if you get a kit from Ikea, uh, you have to use a wooden peg to fasten things together. You can't use a hammer or you'll split the wooden peg and break it. So a mallet is a tool resemble a hammer but it's right. a large, larger head. Right, and it's used to hit fragile objects like uh, uh, wooden pegs that are used to um, 
you know, hold some furniture together. Um, you can hit it without breaking the wooden peg. So that is a mallet. Okay, drill. Um, a drill is a device that has a handle, a trigger, and on the end it has a bit. The bit is used to drill holes in things. So when you pull the trigger, the uh, motor inside the drill turns around and spins the bit, which has uh, grooves and a pointed end, and the bit makes a hole in the wall as it spins. Drill. Drill, as a, a noun, can also mean an exercise uh, done to prepare for something, like an earthquake drill. Thank you for watching Jason Adam TV on Blued and Jason Adam TV on YouTube. If you have any questions or comments at all, please leave them and I'll try to answer them during the live stream. Okay, the next word is screwdriver. Screwdriver. There are several different types of screwdriver, but the two most common are the flat head and Phillips head. So the flat head screwdriver has a flat tip. Uh, it's used for uh, older style screw screws that have one slot on the head. There's also the Phillips head screwdriver. Is it cross? Right. Uh, so the point on the end of the Phillips head looks like a cross. That's called a Phillips head. P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S. Phillips head, H-E-A-D. Phillips head screwdriver. You know, I own uh, Apple's product that use uh, exceptional screw, you know. Oh, yeah, hex screws. Uh, there are hex screwdrivers. Those are for some specialized screws, sometimes in electronic products. And um, so you have to have a hex screwdriver for that. Yes. Okay. Um, if you have any comments, let me know. Hello, TWN Taiwan Aaron on Blue. Thank you for watching. Okay, the next word is snips. Uh, those are the things with the green handles in the picture and they look like they have scissor blades, uh, tiny scissor blades on the tip. Uh, we usually call these tin snips, T-I-N-S-N-I-P-S, -S because they're usually used to cut the metal tin. Um, like if you're putting a tin roof on your house. Usually we use uh, it to cut sheet metal. Yes, it's used to cut sheet metal, like sheets of tin that are used for roofing. Uh, if you need to cut a hole for like a, a smokestack or a chimney or something, uh, you can use these snips or tin snips to uh, cut the metal. Okay, the next word is chisel. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay, a chisel looks kind of like, uh, what was the thing that we had at the beginning? A uh, file. It, it kind of looks like a file. Whoops. But the difference is, uh, a chisel is shorter than a file, and it doesn't have a rough side, a rough edge. Uh, it has a sharp point that's tapered, and it is used to cut grooves in wood. There's an edge on the tip. It's an right. edge tool with a flat steel blade with a cutting edge. Right. So the the tip is cut at a slant and it has a sharp tip that can cut wood. Oh, ice. You can chisel the ice. Also ice. 
Uh, so it can be used for woodworking or for ice carving, wood carving or ice carving. And usually you tap on the end, the handle of the chisel with a, a mallet uh, in order to cut into the ice or the wood. Yeah, you can use this as a verb. You can say chisel or something. Okay, the next word is jackknife. Uh, jackknife is just a general term. Whoa! What happened there? Uh, let me zoom in. Let me go back to maybe 600. Oops. I'm typing in Chinese again. Just hit uh, shift and you can change it. Yeah, I hit caps lock instead of shift. Technical problems. Okay, there we go. All right, let me skip back over to this side. Uh, you say hi. Okay. Jackknife. So a jackknife is, uh, thank you whoever said love and Shu hi. Shu Xiao Yu. Thank you for saying hello and, and love. And thank you for watching. If you have any comments, let me know. So uh, we're talking about tools today. And uh, this tool is a jackknife. A jackknife is basically any knife that I folds up. Um, okay, uh, the picture is blocking. I mean, look, that's... Oh, I see. That's why I have to the hide video yeah. is blocking. Let me move the jackknife over. And uh, yeah, picture on the right. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that is the jackknife, uh, and in the picture they show a particular kind of jackknife, a Where Swiss jackknife? Swiss Army knife. Actually, it's in my pocket here. In my pocket. Okay. You can okay, so this is my Swiss Army knife. Uh, it's a type of jackknife. It's got many different kinds of blades that fold. I had one that I bought in America and it got stolen here in Taiwan on a, a job site. Somebody was doing some um, building in the build, building that I lived in and uh, probably one of the workers swiped my knife. Um, so I bought a new one in Taiwan. Okay, so that's a jack knife. It's a folding knife that fits in your pocket. Okay, the next word is spring. Oops. Let me see. Control shift plus plus plus. Nope, that didn't work. Oh, I gotta. I know what I'm doing wrong. I got to do a half screen thing. Make it go half screen. So I can manipulate the. There we go. Okay, spring. So a spring is just a coiled piece of wire. Uh, they're found in everything from cars to ink pens. And, um, of course, if you compress them, they will bounce back. Spring. Okay, and there's a tough-looking girl um, holding a screwdriver. Let's see, is that all the words in this poster? Probably. I think so. All right, so I'm going to wrap up for today. If you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, please tune in tomorrow around the same time. I'll have another English lesson, and you can talk to me then. Well, actually, tomorrow will be Saturday, so we will probably have uh, a special on Saturday where I comment on a music video. Joe Jo uh, Joe Sen music video. And um, did we do that on Sunday or Saturday? I think it was Sunday. It will be either day. Okay. 
Okay, so tomorrow is either going to be an English lesson or it's going to be um, Joe Shen's reaction. Uh, reaction to the famous Chinese singer Joe Shen. And, uh, you know, a secret that is going to be revealed. Oh, yeah, and we're going to reveal a secret. So please tune in tomorrow around this time and to Jason Adam TV on Blued or Jason Adam TV on YouTube. Jason, you can tell them the Chinese name. What Chinese name? Of our channel. 这不是预录的版本，昨天有个朋友以为说我们在录影啊，其实这是直播。而直播完之后呢，YouTube就会自动存档啊，然后各位就可以看到我们直播的内容。所以如果怕错过朋友们，很欢迎各位到YouTube美